it is a, another day. We're taking it on a test drive right here. 14.2. This is what I got set up here so I can just watch the wide band. But it's right at 14.3. For, it's pretty good. You got trans fluid? Yep. I nice. checked it. 17, 16, that's still fine, 17. Seven. <laughs> awesome. That was yeah. that was an amazing wait. How long was that tune? That or that was a seven minute, eight minute data log? Noise. Yeah, that was about eight minutes of driving. That was awesome. It drove so good. And Vince tuned this. The company we said, I forget what it was called, mailordertune.com or something yeah. like that. They they were assholes, so yeah. They're still working with me and we'll see how yeah, that we'll goes, see. but it's basically <clears throat> I guess we can talk about it right now. Uh, Vince sent him all the information on Thursday. It is now Saturday. Uh, they did get back to us on Saturday, but basically they're telling Vince that the snake eater injectors are a no fly. There's no fly. We can't do it. So I knew this going in, like with working with Lido, if you're not using something that's like OEM or like big name brand, most of the time they're not going to want to tune with it. But Snake Eater Performance provides all the injector data. And uh, they're even advertised as the most tunable injector or whatever. That's what at least they say. But you'd expect some company like this, mail mailordertune.com, that does HP tuners would be willing to do something like that. It doesn't say anywhere in the website, but they're like, oh, we can't use these. So Vince is like, the fuck you can. I have a running tune. So he sent them the tune. They're like, oh, we don't work with speed density. We only did do mass airflow. So another wall. But... Uh, Vince did some more tuning from Thursday to now, like working on the tune. He found something with the um, injectors and the Corvette regulator. The Corvette regulator is set to run about 58 PSI. And what was it about the 43? So most uh, injectors are flow tested at 43.5. Uh, so there's an equation you can find on Summit's website because Summit's great. 
and that equation tells you what to do to come up with the multiplier you need for a higher fuel pressure. And then you take your numbers across your flow data board and you multiply by whatever your multiplier is and now you have your new flow rate. Yep, and basically this entire time we've been fighting the car being too lean this entire time. Now it's like when he first put it on, it was like running rich. So after some more tuning, definitely throughout driving it needs just a bit more it looks like in some spaces. But uh, we got up to 2400 RPM. We have an eight minute data log for him to go over and make adjustments and then we can go on a longer drive and maybe even take it up higher because we have a road down the street where we do testing on. Um, not for like wide open throttle or anything like that yet, but he can get up to a bit higher speeds, like 45, 50 miles per hour. We got to 40. Yeah, we got to 40, but for, co I mean, consistent 40. Yeah. Like we, we only got that, stre a little bit. that stretch of road is only like 30 seconds or something. This one is much longer. So yeah. Um, we're going to go ahead and do some more revising on this and we'll be back, but it drove for the first time, which is freaking awesome. I guess it drove a couple days ago or whatever, and we just did that loop, but this was a good drive and Literally, Vince could probably drive this home with how it is acting at the moment. Yeah, it would probably make it as long as I kept it on the back roads. So I do want to fix that rubbing, though. Yeah, the, the pan hard bar, since we lowered it, the, the differential is out a little bit. So this tire on the passenger side is out, and this one's in. So since it's in, it's touching the bump stop now. So we need to adjust it to kick the, the drive or differential out that way. Not the biggest deal. And then, uh, yeah, more tuning on this. Vince will see, I guess, what the tuner guy says. But with how this is going, he might be needing our money back <laughs> because yep. we might not even need him. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do some more revising and we'll be back. The sound kind of got louder when he was turning his wheels. Yep. Maybe it's... Uh, There's a lot it could be. Literally, his power steering pump's going out. That pulley is new. Also, we attached the whole subframe and stuff, so yeah. the, the steering rack things. came off, right? Yep, could be a lot of different things. All right, guys, we are back. It's been a, a bit since our last video. It's actually been like a week since you saw Vince and Isaiah driving the Trans Am over here. So basically, uh, the guy with uh, Mail Order Tunes got back to Vince, finally, and com combination of the tune he gave him and the Vince's retuning it's driving really good now uh we fixed the issue or vince did he just adjusted the pan hard bar it's not perfect but it's not um scraping anymore and then inside here you have the gauge pod just like that's in the mustang where i have the full series some pro sport gauges and then vince's uh wide band these are not wired in yet just gonna be there for down the road so use code jury rig to get 10 percent off pro sport gauges um, but we got this wide band put in. I don't got the keys, but basically it's powered on and everything and it looks real nice And then also have our USB over here for data logging So we can tuck this up out of the way when we don't need it But uh, we're gonna go take on a legit test drive now it drives so much better from what Vince has told me So we're gonna do that now. Also uh, here pop the hood real fast <clears throat> There was one catastrophic failure yeah. <laughs> Vince was it was pretty bad. Vince was driving and then the power steering pump just got obliterated and also dug a, a hole into the side of the uh, reservoir so it leaked. So yeah, it is uh, going to be no power steering. So I mean, just if a little... something goes wrong with your power steering and you need to bypass it, nifty trick, 52 and a half inch belt, six rib. For an LS. Yeah, for an LS and you can skip the idler and the power steering and run your shit. Yep. Also, you didn't even really need to run your AC because you're... Oh, well, no, that's on a separate belt yep. system. So literally, that's just running the water pump at that point, right? Yeah, it's running the water pump and the alternator. Nice. All right, guys. Well, we are going to go ahead on a test drive. Fired right up. Yeah, running a little rich. Yeah, but been uh, a little rich, but, but that's fine. That. Yeah, that's fine. Oh yeah, it feels so much better already. Like literally, oh, feels so much better already. Literally just moving. Also, it's yeah, fourteen seven right now. Kind of surges when cold a little bit, but that's just big cam life, I guess. <laughs> How's the power steering? Power steering. Yeah. Yeah, it runs.
Riding's pretty rich just driving around, but more more tuning to be done. Yeah. At least now I can drive it. What's the highest RPM you've brought it to? Like 4,400? 44. Nice. The motor's probably broken in enough where you can do a little pull. How's the uh, gauge pod uh, like position? It's not bad. You can see it all well and everything? Yeah. It's driving so much better. It's really hard to put into, like, you guys watching the video. Obviously, you're not sitting in the seat, but it feels so much better. Current gear three. Just downshifted to one. It's working. The trans is working really good, too. We rebuilt that shit ourselves. Yep. too much throttle um, but we did get pretty high in the RPM so that's good just more data logging also we've only put I don't know like 80 miles on the motor so I don't know what you guys believe in you know like break-in period wise but uh, we want to put it a little a little bit more miles on it before we really do full throttle stuff unless you want to do it right now I'll give them some throttle do it That's so awesome. That was 70. Nice. We got a steering wheel sideways like a gangsta. Yes, sir. Well, this is just running so great, guys. Coolant temp 194, intake temp 79. AFR is pretty rich right now, about 10 still. It says not recover. We don't have a uh, fuel cutoff during deacceleration. Oh yeah. No, no knock retard at all. Yeah, all zeros on that. Spark advance. We got up to at four thousand RPM, about thirty-one degrees in advance. Up just hot hit, I felt it. Nice. The cam and the the cam and the solid uh, motor mounts really shake the car at a at a standstill. It's like old hot rod. It's not too bad though. Well, no, I'm not saying it's bad. It's cool. guys that's the sound of a, a newly built 408 stroker if you just never heard one i guess on youtube before i've looked online just for sound clips and they're kind of hard to find but uh yeah 408 stroker with a big cam so drives much better now literally just needs alignment just a couple of small things yeah. i mean still needs to pull the trans for that oil leak unless it's like not doing that anymore i haven't checked yeah but uh that coolant crossover thing alignment possibly pull the trans for the oil thing but that's not even an issue at the moment more tuning but yep. uh otherwise that's gonna do it uh th if she you runs and drives boys yeah she it does it took us two months this time it actually was really fast if you look it was may 27th when we posted the video of the trans in coming here i mean we did have the whole build series of the trans and motor and everything but that was uh, time sensitive yeah it's, it was not time sensitive at all yeah so may 27th to now and it's uh it actually was out of the driveway before then so uh yeah, left, what, like four days ago yeah fourth of july actually 
I think it was 4th of July. Yeah, yeah. it was 4th of July. Yep. So, uh, yeah, guys, uh, if you haven't checked out already, the whole build series is basically done. The next stuff we'd be doing with it is just maintenance things and then down the road more mods, I guess. Like, probably use a bit better intake and throttle body and whatnot because it's such a big motor. It's got the Sock LS1 stuff. And then past that, we were plans are to twin turbo it. We did build the motor to be able to handle, like, a 1,000 horsepower. And the trans will get grenaded, but yeah. rear end will be fine. So possibly even a 4L80 swap in the future. That'd be pretty sweet or some other type of strong transmission swap. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it. Check out our other videos. Check out the whole build series. We got a, a whole build series on this Mustang, supercharged, 6 or 80 swapped, doing that Camaro over there, 3,800 stuffed, big turbo. So check out other videos. Check out our Patreon. Like, subscribe, and comment down below.